Welcome to Comics on Parole. My name is Dan Glazier. I'm your host. This is my fairy princess, uh, Stacy Silverman. Say hi, Stacy. Hello. Your, your fork wand. Okay. And this is our cameraman, uh, Al Burrows. Hey, Stacy, go, fairy princess, go get Al over here. We are now in a state-of-the-art facility. We moved into a state-of-the-art facility. All right. What's up, man? And, and what, like my old girlfriend said, nothing. That's a problem. You can go now. We can go. Why? Anyway, we're in a state-of-the-art facility. I helped Al man. move into the state-of-the-art facility. And to show you what's state-of-the-art, we now have like a new amplification system. Welcome to Comics on Pro. And uh, we have a new applause machine. We have applause machine. And up uh, and an applause sign. So we're real state-of-the-art, right? That's right, right, man. Uh, and Al, 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 I helped Al move in. Al didn't. That, that was a beast. Wasn't Al it? didn't do a thing. He didn't lift a thing. All he did was direct me. Dan, bend with your knees. Lift with your knees, Dan. Lift with your knees. I'll give you a knee. <laughs> get back to the, the command center. Man, we were old men that day, boy. Hey, fairy princess, get him back to the command center <laughs> before this comedy spaceship goes off course. <laughs> oh, Lord. Okay, now now we're going to bring to the uh, to the uh, parole desk here a fine young man to do a promotion for Jerry Farber side door. Fairy princess, please bring uh, Mr. Stephen Nose. Stephen Nose just came in second in the Savannah Comedy Contest. Which is a very uh, unknown contest, but it soon will be on the map. Uh, right, that's, that's enough. enough. <laughs> Stephen, no. we got a minute here. Stephen's oh. going to do a promotion for Jerry Farber side door. That's enough, please. Jerry Far, <laughs> Jerry Farber side door, and a show he's going to be doing at Jerry Farber side. Take it away, Steve. Hey, yeah, uh, December 14th, uh, I'm going to have a show at Jerry Farber's Side Door. It's called Avoiding the Light. I'm bringing around uh, Atlanta's best comedians. Hopefully I can do this every uh, couple months. Uh, but we got headliner Mia Jackson coming through. She opened for Dave Chappelle when he came by in Atlanta. Also have 2012's Atlanta's uh, top comic, Michael Hahn. 2013's uh, Creative Loafing's Reader's Choice Best Male Comic, uh, Carlos Rodriguez. Also Kino Trice, Ben Palmer, and very good impressionist by the name of Cyrus Steele. And I'm hosting Stephen O's. And this Friday, a very well-known man, uh, he's an impressionist, Jim Gossett. Who's on W? Who's on um, 106 a radio from 12 to 3 every day? He does 150 different voices. He's going to be at Jerry Farber's Diner on Friday. He's going to be on this show, um, the next show, the 19th. Anyway, fair, thank you so much, Stephen. Welcome. Thank you so much. Take him away. Nice. Okay. Nice now glazed. we want to bring our next esteemed guest. Go get uh, Fairy Princess. Go, go get Dennis. Oh, Dennis Aloya is a very well-known magician here in Atlanta. He Hi, also he's also going to be having his own show uh, next Tuesday, right? That's right. And what's the name? That's enough. That's enough. <laughs> That's enough. You're talking to me. That's enough. <laughs> they, no. Oh. Okay. He's going to have his own show next <laughs> week. Uh, called what? It's. Uh, wait a minute. You got, we, 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 have, we only have thirty <laughs> minutes here. I'm having Keep a it real. Moment. Keep it real. Keep it real. Keep That's it real. right. Okay. Right yeah. now, I'm bringing to the guest. Uh, I'm bringing to the parole desk. <laughs> And our first uh, comic that's coming, I'm going to let, uh, he's a magician, did I tell you that? He's a magician. Yeah, I do magic. Jamil, come up here. He's going to do a magic trick for Jamil. you got to make it fast. If you can put it down to one minute, that's good. It'll be fast. Okay. Have a seat, and Jamil. Take a seat, Jamil. And then I'll introduce, will you move out of the way, please? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if y'all want me around to How you doing, Jamil? <laughs> All right. Hey, doing? did you ever notice that there's a lot of lousy comics, but never a lousy magician? Yeah, yeah, you're right. I, Isn't I that true? Yeah. Isn't that true? So you think about that. Out. 
I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I can take any lousy comic, for instance, you. Okay. And I can turn you into a pretty good magician. <laughs> okay. All right. You ready for this? Hope this shows up. I have. I better stand. I better stand for this. I have two one dollar bills. Can we all see that? Can we see that? All right. I'll show you both sides. All I'm going to do is fold them up. Hold up straight. Now the magic number, Jamil, to remember is two, okay? Mm -hmm. Are you ready? Now what's the magic number? Two. That's correct. One, two, a snap of the finger, and the two ones have now disappeared and they're replaced by a two dollar bill. <laughs> wow! Wow! wow. <laughs> in, case, in case you missed that, I'm going to take the two dollar bill, fold it over. Now you still remember the magic number? Yeah. Two, right? Yeah. One, two, now the two ones have reappeared. Awesome. Now, Jamil. Wow! You, thank you very much. It just so happens that I have marketed, uh -huh. packaged, and actually sell this you trick. Brought out some weed. Yeah, I have spared <laughs> no expense okay. in our packaging, okay? This is $25. Okay. This is this trick with the instructions. And I even put in a $2 bill and two ones. Okay. So uh, I take cash, MasterCard, or uh, check, whatever. Okay. Well, I'm trying thank to figure out much. how much Thank you very much. I appreciate that. <laughs> Al, let's take it to a commercial break, Al. Take it to a break. <laughs> you just came home. Uh, first... Okay, welcome back. I'd like to um, introduce to you Jamil uh, Harley. Jamil Harley is originally from Indianapolis, Indiana. Quiet on the set. <laughs> originally from Indianapolis, Indiana, and currently based in Atlanta, Georgia, he's been heard on nationally syndicated Bob and Tom radio show. Was featured in New York Daily newspaper for his advancement for his advancement in laughing. Devil Comedy Festival. We we'll yeah. see on CNN, Comcast On Demand. He traveled across the co uh, country playing comedy clubs, colleges, churches. He's a comedian, philanthropist. According to the donation, the donate, the donate, the donations he gives to the IRS. I want to welcome to the table, <laughs> Mr. Jamil Harley. He, he's from Indianapolis. I'm from Anderson, Indiana. Yeah. How are you doing, Jamil? Yeah, I'm doing all right, man. How are you doing? I'm doing all right. Um, now, what's new with the dating trend, my son? My son, oh wow. Uh, <laughs> the dating trend is, is, is getting out of control, man. Like, I dated this one girl who was so insecure that she wanted everybody to know that we was in a relationship. Right. I'm talking about girls, it didn't even matter. Like, I was in the mall last weekend, and she points out this girl and is like, does that bitch know we're in a relationship? I was like, oh, uh, that's a mannequin. And <laughs> she doesn't even have a head. What are you? <laughs> well, she got some titties. I was like, hey, you know? now, do, now, you like, do you like girls with pets? Without pets, or do you like pets at all? You know, I, I can dig a pet as long as it's not too off the chain. Cause I used to have a cat. Right. I used to have a cat. His name was Tony the Turned Up Tiger. Yeah. <laughs> he was yeah. a thug, and I knew it because his name was tattooed on his shoulder. Gotcha, gotcha, yeah, gotcha. Was, but I'm gonna tell you, I was, I wasn't, I wasn't the best, the best pet handler, cause I used to chase him around the house with the vacuum on high. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And you would see his heart jumping out of his chest, and his pupils would dilate real big and black. Yeah. And so I told him, I pulled him to my face, and I said, hey, that's how I feel when I'm riding around with no car insurance, Tony. So uh, This was a cat. This was a cat. I like cats. Yeah. I had two for lunch yesterday. I tell you what, I just found out that catnip is like crack for cats. Oh, really? Yeah, really? you wiped across his face. He looked at me, he said, hey, brother, you need five dollars I can hold on to? Let me wash your windows or something. <laughs> <laughs> now, now, you're a vegan, correct? Yes. What, have you, how, when did you become a vegan? Uh, a year ago. Yeah. I became I became a vegan a year ago, and I'm telling you, like that whole process, I prematurely thought I was sexy one night. Right. <laughs> like I hit the gym, and I yeah. got home, and it was a big bottle of baby oil, and I just started slathering on it. Yeah. And I sent out a few naked pictures. I Th did. This Man. is a G-rated show. I'm, Jamil. but I'm gonna tell There's you, children that watch this show, Jamil. Children out there, don't ever send out the naked pictures because you know your naked picture is insignificant when you get compliments on everything in the picture but your naked body. Well, let me ask you, what kind of what kind of people do you look up to? I look up to like uh, older gentlemen. Yeah, like, old, you said, like me. Yeah, like, like me. you said, yeah. like old school players. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you know why? Because 
They can do things that younger guys like me can't do. Like what? Like, Tell me. I'd like to know. You can pick up women using lyrics from songs that were created yeah. way before they were born. If my wife would let me, I would. Yeah. I can see him walking in the house. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, hey, girl, let me talk to you. Because, see, old school, players, they, old school players, they always talk like they just got done eating Thanksgiving dinner. They're like, hey, what's up, baby? You all right? <laughs> and I seen this old school dude pick up this girl at the club using lyrics yeah. from a song. And he walked up to her. He said, hey, baby, let me talk to you for a second. Yeah. I'm hot, and I'm hot just like an oven. That sounds just like me. And I need some loving. <laughs> Everybody know that's Marvin Gaye. That's right. That's she right. was so astounded, so I was like, well, I need to try that. So I, I walked up to this girl, and I said, hey, I need to tell you something about me. Um, I be stroking. <laughs> I stroke it to the east. And I, wait a minute, baby. Okay. Come here. Like, she ran away after that. No. Okay. okay. It, it didn't work. Now, listen. Jamil is actually a, and I'm not kidding here, he's an aspiring movie maker, right? Uh, yeah. He's an aspiring, he's going to be the next Steven Spielberg. So I'd like to show you one of his uh, little videos. This is hilarious. This comedy humor is like, Doc Hollywood over here will really uh, appreciate this video. Okay, I'm sorry. That wasn't so funny. It was frightening. Yeah. <laughs> Explain that to me about what this movie was about. What was what, your incentive? What that the spooky, right there? The spooky movie. It was last year around Halloween, and I had just got my iPhone 4S. Uh-huh. And so it was before I got my full HD camera, and I just wanted to test out the capabilities of the phone. Uh-huh. And so I just started playing around. I got a, 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 a lens for it, and I just went around. And it, it, it's ironic how that came together because I was just shooting stuff at work and then around my apartment. Yeah. And then I, then I seen a trailer on the iPhone, the iMovie app. And so I put in the scary movie trailer, but I had clips that I just added to it, and it made it It scary. was like watching The Exorcist. Yeah. Now let's see his comedy talents. Play it to the, the – this is hilarious. Hold on to your seatbelt. It's funny. Which one is it? That was sheer genius. That was sheer genius. <laughs> that was sleepy. Yeah, you're, you're, you're on your way. I just hope you don't get in trouble at work. Is anyone from work watching this? Uh, they might. That's like a year old, though. Now, listen, tell me about, is there something about you that might surprise our listeners? Yeah. Um, you may not know it by looking at me, of course, but I have a foot fetish. I love pretty pedicure feet on women, but what I can't stand is like, oh, here we go. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God we didn't see that on camera. She was, the fairy princess was showing her feet. Okay, go ahead. Go ahead. You're going to have the Nation of Islam up here. Just. <laughs> anyway. So, so. But yeah, I, I like pretty pedicure toes on women, but what I can't stand is to see men's naked feet. Like, because because we don't take care of our feet. No, no, we don't. Like, you probably haven't put on lotion since your high school prom, have you? Your feet just. No. 
his feet just look like oh uh, oh okay you know see <laughs> prime example his feet look like broken up concrete just <laughs> Dead skin just flying in the wind. Yes, that's man. right. Well, Jamil, thank you very much. Thank it's Fairy you. Princess. Come take Jamil away. Yes. It was an honor having you on. Take me away. And let's take it to a break. All right. And uh, white lady. <laughs> Okay, welcome back. Now I'd like the Fairy Princess to bring up to the parole desk Dr. Neil Schulman. He's a physician, author, stand-up comedian for kids, adults, and seniors, often known as the real Doc Hollywood, since he wrote the novel which the, which the Michael J. Fox movie was based on, with co-starring co Carl Hyacin. He's written over 25 books, including Puberty Prevention Club, The Body Red Light Warning Signals, and 101 Ways to Know You Are a Nurse. Welcome to the parole desk, Dr. Neil. <laughs> okay. You're cool. I like you. So how you been? I been right. very good. I like, it. <laughs> I like it. Okay. Okay, Dr. Neil, what made you become a doctor? Why did you want to become a doctor? Why? Yes. Well, when I was delivered, yeah. my grandmother was there. Yeah. And I came out of the uterus and she said, are you going to be a doctor? Yeah. And I said, she said, if you're not, you go back in. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had no choice. Gotcha, 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 yeah. gotcha. I mean, she was now, Dr. Deal is the writer and producer of the movie Doc Hollywood with Michael J. Fox. The book originally was called... Uh, what Dead Again. What Dead Again. Now, how did you get Michael J. Fox to star in this movie? It was a very long process, I understand. I just went over his house, knocked on the door, and said, would you like to be in a movie based on a book I wrote? Gotcha. And he said, please, please. <laughs> Gotcha, gotcha. Please, please. Okay, gotcha. Um, now, but what? Now, what? Now, let me ask you: Did the movie follow the book real closely, or? Well, uh, it was about half and half. Yeah, yeah. It's you know, half followed and half did. Half, yeah, yeah. yeah. Now, but go ahead. I was just gonna say, I was upset because Michael was having all the fun. Right. So I wanted to have my own movie. Oh, that's right. You have. Uh, he has a movie. Doctor Deal has a movie called Who Knows. Yeah, it's dub. It's on YouTube. It's free. It's free. There's not even an ad before. Before we show, I'm going to show a clip of Who Knows. Oh, Let's show right. a clip of Mike uh, Doc Hollywood. A short clip of Doc Hollywood. And I actually brought a clip of Doc Knows. No, I don't see any toxic striations. Red streaks. You sure it was a black widow? Oh, uh, here. I kept it. And some TP. Oh dear Lord, it's escaped. She thinks Ray's having an affair with the pastor's wife, but Ray swears it's just scrub or crash. <laughs> Ray is a nut, I'm telling you. It's like a blurred spot in my vision. Out there, no? There? No, there. I'm cured. Okay, now, um, let me ask you a question. Now, tell us about Who Knows, this movie Who Knows. He produced a movie called Who Knows, which you met your wife on, right? Yeah, it was about an. It was after Patch Adams. Uh -huh. I met her at a Patch Adams event where I was doing comedy. Right. And we made this movie. It's W H O. Uh huh. N O S E. Gotcha. N E I L. Right. On YouTube. Right. And it's about an old man looking for a wife. Yeah. And he puts her in a movie where she's chasing him as a gold digger. Gotcha. And after we made it, she married me. And and where can people find this movie on YouTube? Correct. YouTube. It's all free. But let's show a clip of this movie. Yeah. <laughs> 
W-H-O-N-O-S-E-N-E-I-L. What do you do if your dog's ashes go up in the air? What do Dick Cheney and Jimmy Carter have in common? Should every man be naked when proposing to his future wife? Is suicide the only answer? Introducing a new concept in film. A reality comedy? A reality comedy. A reality comedy. What kind of movie is this? A reality comedy. They call it uh, a reality comedy. What's a reality comedy? It's a, it's a comedy with, with real people. Oh. How do you get a woman to love you? Have a muscle spasm in your eyebrows. A muscle spasm in your eyebrows to <laughs> catch a woman? You just keep on think, making her think you're interested in the same things as her. Find her when she is in a state of mental deficit. Boing, 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 boing. Don't act like yourself. Because if you start acting like yourself, yeah. you'll scare them all. That's right. Is there anything you can do to get these muscle spasms? Sometimes just to be a little nerdy might do it. Would you use this hat to catch a woman? What's the best way to break up? The simplest way is to call on the phone. Now the right way it probably is face to face, but you know me and we're chicken. We like, we take the easy way out. Tell them and run. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just, hey, we do. Boom. What is love? Love is when somebody loves you and you kiss them. Love means having to say, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, it was my fault. Love is when you walk in the bathroom and see your significant other pooping and not being grossed out. That's love. I'm really not old enough to know what love is, but I know one of the signs of love. Doesn't it have a story? Of course it has a story. Of course it has a story. Red is for love. Neil, these have been spray painted. This is really, you really, it's about an hour and a half, 90 minute movie, right? And it really is a lot of fun. It's kind of sad, too. I, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Now, again, they go to YouTube and put Who Knows Neil. Three words. W-H-O-N-O-S-E-N-E-I-L. -E -E no, there could be a sequel, right? Hopefully. Maybe you could be in it. Um, yeah, you could put me in but it. Me and my wife's marriage. See, my, the... The thing that happened after I made the movie, uh -huh. I married the woman. I married That's her. right. That's I hadn't right. married her before. See, we're going to get you on another show, Keeping It Real with Neil, uh, with uh, Dennis, <laughs> so you can he can give you even more time. This man has such a vast history. He's a doctor at Emory University. He's a comedian. He does children's shows. But before we show him the children's show, show a clip, uh, a picture of him and uh, Michael J. Fox together. There they are. Good picture. But I have uh, I have a seven-year-old son. Yeah, yes, tell me about your seven-year-old son. Well, he's the result of the movie. That's true, because you met your wife? Yeah. That's right. So I'm out. He's out of diapers, and I'm into diapers. You're getting into diapers. You're in diapers now? Oh, yeah. You're wearing Depends? Want to see some? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> not really. Isn't she pretty, the fairy princess? Oh, she's very pretty. <laughs> anyway, tell me Would what... Would you like to meet my son? He's seven, seven years old. <laughs> well, his girlfriend's 91. <laughs> listen, listen. What is, what, how do you know if you're a nurse? Huh? How do you know if you're a nurse? He doesn't believe me. How do you know if you're a nurse? How do you know? You use bedpans as chip and dip trays. Yeah. And you're smart enough not to be a doctor. Yeah. And whenever you shake hands with somebody, you check for good veins. Oh, very good, very good. Uh, okay. Okay. Now, listen. You, he also has a children's show. And it, it's very high. Do you still do the children's show? Uh, they're on uh, YouTube a lot, and we do live shows. It's called What's in a Doctor's Bag. Dot com. Let's play a clip from uh, What's in a Doctor's Bag. Okay. So how did you find uh, your wife? Did we ask that? Okay, you found your wife. Who knows what noses are for? No turns off for breathing, not picking. When you pick your nose, you can hurt your nose or get a nose bleed. 
So pick a great, pick a friend, but do not pick your noses. Um, now you're still filming these, and you do some of these lives, right? Like, yeah. Did you start these uh, when you had your little boy? Is that where you got the idea? What gave you the idea to do these little children? Well, I did a book, What's in a Doctor's Bag, where the instruments become creatures, and now we're working on a musical of that. Yeah. And uh, after I did that, Public TV uh -huh. asked me to do these spots, so we started doing. Them. Now, speaking of animal, what what can human beings learn from the rest of the animal kingdom? Oh, there's a lot you can yeah. learn. Right. Uh, you know, for instance, giraffes. Right. I like giraffes more than humans. Right. You know one giraffe who owns 10,000 acres of land and won't let another giraffe eat a little grass on its land. Really? Very they possessive. Don't, they don't do it. Humans do that. Oh, that's true. Yeah. And I don't know any, you know, like... 5,000 giraffes who will kill 5,000 other giraffes because they have more spots. You sound like you're describing my wife. No, anyway, okay. <laughs> but, hey, um, now you were close friends with Patch Adams. Right? Yeah. With Patch Adams starting uh, Robin Williams. Right. Tell us about your relationship with that. Well, uh, Patch uh, called me up and said he's got a movie coming out. Uh -huh. And it's called Patch Adams. Yeah. And I said, that's your name. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And he didn't realize that. Yeah. He forgot it was his name. <laughs> Are you serious? Really? Yeah. yeah. I, I, if you call him up now, you know how you know if you have Alzheimer's? No, tell me. You hide your own Easter eggs. That's right. And the good thing about Alzheimer's, you're meeting new people every day. That's, that's right. right. That's right. Now, now, do you have an ongoing relationship with Pat? Patch Adams starting Robin Wood. Did you go watch it on the set? Did you see of it, any of it being filmed? I didn't see the movie. I was president of his organization. But Patch Adams came here with you to the Fox Theater, and you did a big, earned about $80,000 worth of charity. What was it called? It was called The Real Doc Hollywood. The Real Doc Hollywood. Presents The Real Patch, Patch Adams. Adams. That's, pretty, that's pretty amazing. Now, how can you stop kids from smoking cigarettes? Uh, ugly faces. What? Ugly faces. Okay. What we need to do is have an internet site uh -huh. where kids make ugly faces. Uh -huh. This is what your lungs look like if you smoke cigarettes. Oh, right, right, right. And then we give $5,000 to the kid who makes the ugliest face. And we also need an animated movie where the creatures are evil cigarettes. Uh, have you done that? Are you working on this? Uh, yeah, we've worked on it. Well, listen, what, before I leave, I want the fairy princess to be Dennis Aloya up here, because I want to do a magic trick on you. A magic trick on me? Yes. Yeah, come on, fairy princess. Is he going to make me look handsome? And then I'll, I'll finish the show. You know her, Dennis. <laughs> yeah. Thank you, fairy princess. Okay, Doc, I can tell you have a very interesting mind. I'm going to read it in just a moment, okay? Okay. These five cards represent the best hand in poker you could ever get dealt to you. This is actually a royal flush represented by the uh, King of Diamonds, Queen of Diamonds, Jack of Diamonds, Ten of Diamonds, and we all know the Joker's wild. That counts for anything, right? What I want you to do is concentrate on any one of these five cards, okay? Okay. You have one in mind? Yep. Okay. Now I'm going to read your mind, Okay. and I'm going to take out the card you're thinking of, all right? I'm reading your mind. He's thinking about Dan. No, think about the card. How'd you know? But you know, you gotta wipe Dan out of your mind. He okay. was here a minute ago, but think about a card, okay? Okay. Wouldn't it be amazing if that's the card that you're thinking of? That would be amazing. What card are you thinking of? Queen. The Queen of Diamonds is correct, represented by the Joker, which is wild. Counts for anything? Remember I said that before we started? <laughs> Ooh. No, wait a minute. Don't be disappointed, Doc. Had you chosen this card, that was a Joker, too. Or you could have taken this card, but that was also a Joker. Oh, wait. Or you could have had the fourth one, but that was a Joker. Or you could have had this one, but that's a Joker, so I guess the joke's on you. 
Very, How do you do that? Very Perfectly. Good. Thank you very, very much. Good. Stay there, Dennis. Stay there. We'll put the fairy princess on your lap. Thank you for tuning in for Comics on Parole. Thank you for tuning in to Comics on Parole. Um, oh, stay tuned next show. Remember, we're brought to you by www.harmonybooking.com and American Hearts Radio. And tune in next Tuesday night for, what was the name of my show again? Keeping It Real. Keeping It Real, 715, this station. Thank you. That looks like a poster. Same bat time, same bat place. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Neal. Thank you. On. Mm -hmm. yeah. Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Bye. Bye. And the finest Johnny Manzam from Leonard Skinner. You're listening to American Hearts Radio.